so yeah, the first talk uh, that I'm going to give today is uh, about, about the development update and roadmap. And uh, Chris is going to join me later for a few of the more detailed parts. And I mostly want to talk about how PHPB development changed over the past maybe two years and uh, wh why we've made these changes and what, we, what we're hoping to achieve with this. So in the past, uh, PHP was very much a top-down development process. There was this small elite group of people who get, got to decide uh, what's going to be in the next version, what are we going to do, and basically anybody else just didn't have any say on anything. Um, and I mean, this this process worked quite well in the beginning of PHPB because it wasn't all that big of a pro project. And if you got something small to work on, then a small group of people can get something done really quickly. But um, as the project grow, uh, grew, the uh, project also outgrew its development process. And the this, this small team uh, didn't manage to handle the uh, extra workload and well, development slowed down as we all know and version 3 took uh, more than five years, like nearly six years to develop mostly because of this problem. And So what we're trying to do is uh, kind of get more of a democratic process. Uh, well, not, not necessarily perfectly, but then again, we know parliaments aren't perfect either. It's like representation, right? So uh, we just try to get more people involved in development to uh, raise their opinions, but not necessarily everyone, because most users won't get involved in development. Uh, it's just important that we have enough people to represent them, to uh, have enough people so that none of the real problems are missed so that there's someone in the community for every user uh, who has a problem and that there's at least one person who thinks of this problem and brings it up during the development process. So we've been trying to just get the community more involved, uh, realizing of course that not everybody's going to be involved, but trying to make uh, figure out a process in which uh, we're not just a small group who make decisions which are of interest to themselves, but rather try, at least try and think about more of the users which might not otherwise be involved in the development process. So these are a few of the steps we took more recently um, that are somehow related to these changes. So we introduced Git as the new version control system for PHPBB. Um, we created the Area 51 discussion forums where you can now actually uh, make suggestions, discuss new ideas, new features. Uh, we've implemented this uh, re request for comments process. Um, this, is, this is all relatively new and there's certainly still problems with these. I'm going to be talking about those later. Um, it's just uh, sort of first steps in the, in the direction of uh, implementing this kind of a uh, process. Uh, well, we've switched the tracker, and I think all of you agree that there's lots of problems with the tracker, but it's also part of this process. Um, again, I'm going to talk about the problems and where, what's wrong with it and what's working well later. And the last part I mentioned here is maybe uh, Bamboo, which we set up, uh, which I don't think a whole lot of users or even like uh, people around here have seen yet or used yet, which is the continuous integration platform, uh, because we've not used it a whole lot yet. It's kind of running, and we're going to be using that a lot more uh, in the future. So what I want to do now is just sort of walk through the development process from the beginning, the sparking of some kind of an idea for change, um, to the end where there's an actual product which contains this change. Um, so, I mean, there's lots of different ways how uh, change can be initiated in development. There, there could be just a user who has a problem with a particular feature and realizes this is, this is a bug in the software. Um, now, either he's going to uh, try and get this fixed himself, or maybe he's just going to report, well, tell someone from the support team, and a support team member is going to try and take care of this problem for him. There might be um, a mod author who realizes that some API has a particular problem which doesn't allow him to do what he's trying to do. Um, there might be someone who 
um, who uses a particular feature in a certain way where he realize or where he's got problems with the feature so he, he wants to improve the feature he has, has some ideas how to change it so that it's be uh, so that it can be used more effectively um, or basically just someone comes up with a new feature and like well this would be so cool if it's in the forum so there's lots of there's a few different ways right uh, how this initial idea can come to be and the next step that one should take, no matter which one of these it is, is just file a ticket on the tracker. And even if a ticket uh, is closed right away, or um, like you, you shouldn't be afraid of creating these tickets. The worst thing that can happen is that it's closed, right? And uh, even if it's closed, it's still in there and it won't be forgotten. Um, it certainly might take time until something is worked on, and it might lie around there for a long time. But the good thing about the tracker is it actually it, it's going to continue to keep track of everything. And that's actually one of the reasons why the tracker has been a huge improvement for the development team, the, uh, the people who actually want to implement features and fix the bugs, uh, because it makes it a lot easier to handle a large amount of tickets, which we simply have. I mean, that's, that's a fact. We can't, we can't change that right away. Uh, we certainly are going to try and get that down, but we, we needed a tool that will allow us to work with a much larger amount of uh, tickets, uh, which our own, uh, own bug tracker didn't do. So even though we have a lot of problems with the tracker uh, for users and reporting bugs because the usability <coughs> of Jira isn't quite the same as our own small tool, uh, and we definitely are going to work on improving that, uh, it, is, uh, it is a huge help for developers to just keep track of something. And the tracker also serves as the, the one central point where uh, some, one of these ideas is being tracked uh, while uh, further steps uh, continue. So like uh, the, uh, during the RFC discussion, for example, uh, the status is kept on the tracker. If there's patches, they're going to be tracked on the uh, tracker. So it basically it serves as a central point of figuring out what the status of problems or ideas is and to track their progress. So that's why it's so important to development. Uh, so then we implemented this, this RFC process, and well, again, this is, this is really new to PHPB, so uh, I think we've still got a few problems, and we, we realized one big one recently uh, with the Subsilver 2 removal. I hope all of you have heard about that. So we published a list of planned changes for the new version, and one of those was to drop one of the def of default two styles. Uh, for a number of reasons, um, and it turned out that the majority of the community wasn't actually aware of the fact that there was this RFC process. Uh, so there were a few people involved which were not team members, but uh, it was a relatively small number of people. And um, But I, I still think that the RFC process in this particular case proved to work because a uh, new discussion was sparked and there, were, there was like actual meaningful discussion uh, about point like what are reasons to keep it, what are reasons to remove it, and in the end we came up with a compromise which is going to be that Subsilver 2 is still going to be maintained in the software by the development team and whoever works on PHPB as part of the main repository. There's going to be a clear upgrade path for whoever's using this style. Uh, it's going to be downloadable from the styles database, and the only difference is not going to be packaged in the default installation anymore. Um, so that was something that uh, turned out to be acceptable to pretty much everyone participating in the discussion. And it also shows how the RFC process is supposed to work, where somebody comes and presents their idea, which they filed in the tracker, right? And then um, well, discussion ensues, and uh, the, the goal is to reach consensus. Now, consensus doesn't mean that everybody has to agree that this is the right thing to do or the, the best idea, but basically, you need to have 
uh, acceptance of the change. So if everybody's okay with doing the change that way, because they they can accept, it's not that much of a problem to them uh, to them and their goals um, that they would have to say no, we can't do this. But they they accept that uh, it's of advantage to the majority of users. Um, so th that is consensus, right? Um, so it's it's not about it's not this. Um, sorry. Uh, it, it's not this impossible goal of everybody having the same opinion about the thing that is being presented, but it's rather figuring out uh, a compromise and a solution that is acceptable by everyone. And we, we really have to, I think, learn to work with this process so that uh, we understand that certain solutions might not be what we want exactly, but they're acceptable to us and that's something we can work with. Um, because right now I think a lot of people went into these discussions and just um, like um, pointed out their point of view and uh, in a very, very strong way rather than trying to find a compromise or a common ground. Uh, and that's, that's what we've got to improve about this process, I think. So once we've actually like reached consensus and there's everybody agrees that there's a certain way that this particular thing will have to be implemented. Um, of course, I think I forgot to mention that. So RFCs are really just for bigger changes that really need discussion. Like a small bug, of course, doesn't need a request for comments process. Uh, it's really more about features or big improvements that are going to affect a lot of people. Then the next step is that there's going to have to be a patch that implements this feature. And patches can be written by anyone. So this is where the openness of the development process really kicks in. Because everybody is able to participate in actually implementing these pieces of or these ideas uh, that were accepted. And uh, in particular that means that uh, even if none of the, the development team members uh, really want to implement this feature or, or they simply choose not to spend a whole lot of time on it. If there's someone in the community who, who really feels strongly about this feature and they implement it, uh, we, we, and we've got a final uh, a patch that we can really just apply and use, it's a whole lot more likely to be accepted. Or rather, we're definitely going to accept it if we went through this RFC process. So. Um, there, there's no arbitrary selection from a small group on top anymore, but if the RFC process, which the community participates in, was successful and then somebody writes this patch, it is definitely going to go into the software, no matter whether any development member feels that it's not the right thing to do. Right? And uh, this is also where Git kicks in. Uh, so we, we're using GitHub. This is actually like a screenshot from GitHub, in case you don't, uh, you haven't seen that before. Uh, where uh, it's really easy to uh, make a fork of PHP, be do your own changes in there. We have a wiki page about the guidelines for things like commit messages. Uh, that you should read through if you want to write one of these patches. But it's relatively easy to apply those afterwards, so if you just want to go ahead and work on your feature, you can still figure that out later, uh, or get help from one of the developers. And then once you've finished this, uh, you go back to the tracker, right? Remember, that's, that's the place where we keep track of things. And you, you uh, submit the patch for review. And that basically just means that the developer is going to look over it just to make sure that it follows the coding guidelines and that there's no security implications. It, it's, it doesn't mean that uh, you submit the patch for review with regard to its uh, meaning or whether the development team likes it or wants to have it implemented that way. But it's, it's really just about following the <coughs> standards and the decision is made entirely in this RFC process.